call the media order. Uh, please take the roll. As a reminder to all in attendance, this meeting is being recorded and live streamed on the county YouTube page. Call the roll, Mr. Shron. Here. Ms. Baker. Mr. Tuma. Mr. Tuma is absent at the moment. Ms. Simon. Here. Ms. Stevens. Ms. Stevens is absent at the moment. We have a quorum. Also, like the record to reflect that Council Member Miller is also in attendance. Great. Thank you, Dale, for being here. Um, in case anybody doesn't know, one of the reasons that a little announcement is is given uh, is because we just, uh, whenever anybody takes the microphone, that, that this is a public forum and anything you say is being recorded. And as a result, um, not, to, not that there's going to be a problem with this, anybody that's going to speak today, but we've had an incident uh, in the past where somebody has said some statements that were incorrect, and that became the basis for, sadly, a prosecution uh, uh, out there. So we, we, we know that's not the case today because we have everybody singing happy songs about economic development and job creation. See? Look at that. There we go. Yeah. Uh, so with that being said, I, I just thought maybe it might be interesting. Is there any, uh, uh, any public comment? No, Mr. Chair, no one submitted any public comment. Okay. And uh, uh, we have minutes from the March 7th meeting. Is everybody a chance to look at them? Hopefully they have. Uh, the chair will move. We adopt this, the minutes from the uh, March 7th, uh, 2022. Second. It's been seconded. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion. All in favor of, of the minutes approval, say aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? Hearing no opposed. The minutes have been approved. We have one matter that's uh, been referred to committee. And uh, if you could please read that in the record, that'd be great. Resolution 2022-0100. Re authorizing an economic development loan to Jumpstart Inc. in the amount not to exceed $2,500,000 to provide local matching funds to support one half of the operating costs to carry out the Ohio Third Frontier Entrepreneurial Services Program to assist early stage tech startups, innovators, and small businesses throughout Cuyahoga County. Thank you. Uh, is there someone here to speak on behalf of this? Good afternoon, Councilman Tron, members of council. Um, this afternoon- Sorry, but we still have our sticklers for put your name on the record. All heard, Sorry. apologies, Director of Development. We know who you are, Thank but- you. Yeah. Thank the, you, Councilman. The microphone doesn't know who you are. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, this afternoon, we're here to present and strongly recommend a transaction between Cuyahoga County and Jumpstart. This is a little bit different from the types of transactions we usually do with Jumpstart. So I'm going to take just a moment to explain what we're proposing today and how it's different from some of our other transactions. Several times in the past, Cuyahoga County has loaned money to Jumpstart specifically so that that money combined with other money can be invested in companies, uh, generally early stage companies, startups or companies early in their growth period. That is a core part of Jumpstart's business. They're good at it. They've been quite successful. And the money we've loaned to Jumpstart over the years has been fruitful, both in terms of enabling the growth of companies here in Cuyahoga County and also making sure that the money is returned back to Cuyahoga County with interest as a borrower. We're not here today for exactly that kind of transaction. We're here today and we're recommending a transaction that will end up with the money staying with Jumpstart. It is a loan, and there's a reason it's a loan, which I will come to, but the substance of the transaction and our intent is that the loan be forgiven based on outcomes that Jumpstart is able to um, bring to fruition with that investment. So again, we're, we're proposing a loan, but it's our intent that the money stay with Jumpstart after the loan is forgiven, and this is not for investment in companies, it's to pay for services to early stage tech companies to help their growth. So that's the basic type of transaction we're here for. We have today a number of guests who, after I'm finished and you've questioned me as full as you wish, we will also ask to speak to inform the committee on what this program is, how it operates, and we have um, testimony from several of the business owners that have actually been assisted as examples of how Jumpstart assists them. So after me um, will be Ray Leach, the Chief Executive Officer of Jumpstart, supported by Telly Angie Thomas, his Chief Operations Officer. Business owners here are Tonya Porras, the founder of Gloria's Way, 
Kevin Gavon Kieserling, the CEO of Ready Set Surgical, India Johnson, the founder of UA Vistas, and also here today is Felicia Townsend Ivey, who's the Small Business Development Center Director at the Urban League of Greater Cleveland. So again, um, going back to our proposed transaction, by providing this $2.5 million of funding from Cuyahoga County to Jumpstart, this will leverage funding from the state of Ohio in the Ohio Third Frontier Program. So our money will leverage an equal or, or potentially greater amount of funding from the state of Ohio for total combined um, provision of services to companies. This is a longstanding feature of the Ohio Third Frontier Program, as I believe Ray will also talk about. It's called the Entrepreneurial Services Program, and it is a state of Ohio program which supports the payment of professional advisors to help early stage tech businesses grow. So for example, accountants, uh, business plan advisors, strategic advisors, financial advisors, I believe in some cases attorneys, the very types of professional assistance that a larger company, a more established company, can afford to pay for out of their own money. But in this program, the services are provided to the company without the company having to pay for them because these are early stage companies just getting started and need those professional services to grow and develop. So um, we, in negotiating with Jumpstart, our terms of proposing this funding said, we want to see some specific outcomes. We don't just want vague promises that a certain number of companies will be helped. We want to know what the outcomes are and we actually want some accountability. So the reason we're proposing a forgivable loan, not just an out and out grant, is we want there to be an accountability for the results. These are the results that Jumpstart has agreed will be written into the loan agreement. And these are results just for this year, from the money provided this year, by the end of this year. 230 companies in Cuyahoga County will be assisted. 350 jobs will be created new jobs in Cuyahoga County. 600 jobs will be retained in Cuyahoga County. In other words, the companies that are assisted to grow will already have 600 jobs plus the 350 new jobs added. And at least $160 million of additional leveraged money, capital, will be invested in these Cuyahoga County companies. And Jumpstart is also committed that in writing in the loan agreement, a minimum of 40% of the companies that are assisted will be managed or founded by women, black and or Latino Hispanic persons, um, and, and as well, of course, located in Cuyahoga County. So um, the loan we're recommending would, will be a seven year loan, fully amortizing 3% interest However, anticipating that we will be able to give the forgiveness, we're going to defer the payments and interest till next year, 2023. So again, our anticipation is that if Jumpstart is able to provide the outcomes promised, we will be forgiving the loan. If they are not, um, we are going to negotiate um, a clawback such that to the extent they fall short, the loan will not be forgiven. So if they fall short by say 10%, they're gonna have to pay back 10% of the loan and they'll pay it back with interest over seven years, 3% interest. Additionally, Jumpstart has a pretty, pretty hefty balance sheet, so we'll be requiring a guarantee from Jumpstart secured by things on their balance sheet, intangible assets they have, of more than the value of the loan. So there will be certainty as to their commitment to this loan. Um, so, but again, the substance we, we seek, the outcome we seek is the provision of the 2.5 million, the pulling down from a Ohio third frontier of at least that much in matching funds, the actual services being provided to the businesses, the outcomes I've just listed, that's the intent of this recommended funding. And at this point, before um, turning it over to the Jumpstart team, I would welcome any questions from members of the committee. Members of the committee, questions? If I can. Um, sure. Just before we move any farther, can you just give, I mean, briefly, because I know Third Frontier has been around for a while, but can you just give kind of an overview of Third Frontier? Thank you. And I'm going to, to some extent, defer the specifics to Ray Leach coming behind me. But this program was established several administrations ago, I believe the Taft administration. Um, it has been one of the state of Ohio's signature programs for supporting high tech. It has a number of branches to it, some of which involve supporting academic institutions for research, 
um, some of which involve investing directly in companies through regional intermediaries like Jumpstart. Um, Jumpstart has been, since the beginning, the regional intermediary for this region. Uh, it, it includes not just our county, but a number of other counties in the area, and in fact, no goes, now goes all the way out to Toledo. When Ray Leach comes up, I'm sure he'll be able to rattle off the exact statistics in terms of dollars and outcomes. I will simply say we're talking about investments in at least tens of millions of dollars with um, leveraged follow-on funding well in the hundreds of millions. We're talking of hundreds of jobs created, hundreds of businesses started. This is in the tech sector, but there has been, especially in the past, couple funding cycles that in that focus on equity and inclusion as well as one of the desired outcomes. May I follow up just quickly? So Third Frontier, from what I remember, and it's been a while, uh, had some pretty, I don't want to say significant, but the criteria was very focused. Does, does that focus differ from what we used to do with the dollars that we gave to Jumpstart? Are we kind of shifting the right. dollars that can be used? now that we're partnering with Third Frontier? Thank you, Councilman. From the strategic point of view, Councilwoman, I would say not. we are not shifting the focus. There's always been a focus on tech. However, Jumpstart, because it is a, a large and capable organization, does other things. Um, it does, in fact, support businesses that are not tech businesses. It does that in the city of Cleveland. You know, it, it, it adds that to its portfolio. But I will say, at least from my point of view, when I think of Jumpstart, I still think of expertise in tech. And so Third Frontier is a tech program, and the funding we're talking about this afternoon will have a tech focus. Okay. If, one more, if I can. It, what industries are do you think would be um, not benefiting from Jumpstart that they would have in the past? So again, Councilman, if, uh, perhaps I may not I'd be saying this correctly, but I believe the tech focus is being maintained here. So in terms of the core business of in supporting tech industries, there's no change. What I meant to say was Jumpstart, in addition to its tech focus, because it's capable, has received separate funding from other places, for example, the city of Cleveland, to help other kinds of businesses. But we will not be changing the focus of our investment work with Jumpstart, which is and remains the tech sector. So manufacturing, hospitality, uh, medical, those type of efforts were well, never part of Jumpstart? Well, Councilman, um, manufacturing does have a strong tech component, and so is? does so, medical. Okay. So to the extent there's tech there, it is absolutely part of the mission. Uh, restaurants and bars, not so much, it's, although there may be tech entrepreneurs that have invented devices and methods that can be useful to the hospitality industry, and that's fair game. Okay, good. Thank you for the explanation. Appreciate it. Simon? Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, to Mr. Herdick. So the deferral of payments interest will begin in... 2023 if and unless those objectives are not met. But it looks like these objectives seem to be able to be met in 2022. Yes. So again, the measurables. Yes, Councilman. The intent is to say we, we mean this to be a forgivable loan. We mean for these outcomes to be achieved by the end of this year. We mean to forgive the loan. If, however, that doesn't happen by the end of this year, there will not be an extension. There will be a clawback, and the amount of the clawback will depend on how if they've fallen short. Will it be realistic to have everything um, documented and objectified by the end of this year? That oh, seems like a short window. That's why I'm asking. Thank you, Council. Well, of course, there'll be a reporting period, a short reporting period after December 31st. But yes, uh, in our negotiations with Jumpstart leadership, we very specifically said, look, this is going in writing. You're going to be held to it. Are you sure you can do these things? You can ask Ray Leach again, but he, he and his staff have assured me they, they expect to achieve these outcomes. Just some, some questions. I, I th thought I heard you say that the interest is going to be deferred for one year. Thanks, Councilman. The intent was to defer it until um, the 1st of 2023. Okay. So again, if the clawback did come into play, the interest would start running at the first of the year. So even if, even if the elements that you were looking for occurred or did not occur, are we going to be charging interest for that for, for the year after the first year? It it would be our intent, Councilman, to set it up so that at the end of the year, when everything's been achieved, we are able to give complete forgiveness, and they don't write us any checks, um, and we'll we'll have our loan staff set it up so that that's what the written agreement says. The intent would be 
if we get all the outcomes we're bargained for, that we, we will not receive anything back. Including the interest? Including any interest. Oh, okay. So the, for all intents and purposes, there's no reason to even think of this as, as a loan after uh, if they've achieved everything in the first uh, this first nine months. That is correct, Councilman. Okay, so the interest rate is irrelevant. The payment program is irrelevant. It's a long, so right. the grant, all steps for the grant will have taken place in nine months. That is the and intent, Councilman. Like Simon, so that's, that's the intent. That seems to be a pretty fast track um, um, to, to be getting $2.5 million on the street uh, for, for purposes of... Well, let's go into a couple of things then. Uh, so the state and... The Fund for Economic Future are also participating in this, is my understanding. Is that what you indicated? Um, so, Councilman, it is the state of Ohio's third frontier right. program gotcha. that is matching the funds. There are other local contributors that Jumpstart receives funding from in, in order to match third, third frontier funds. There are quite a number. Okay. Um, but this specific request is going to draw down Ohio third frontier funds in at least an equal amount. In at least an equal amount. So that just answered my next question. This, the, we're in this for 50%, basically, as it yes. sounds like approximately. Is that or pretty close? If it's in at least an equal amount, yes. then the, the third frontier is coming in with $2.5 million? That's that's um, what we've negotiated. I'm looking at Ray. Uh, Ray, are we getting more that's than right. we get, I, got, I got a whole bunch of other questions. We'll get to you on, okay. in a, in so a second, right? subject to any and amendment. We'll do our by, best to get every we right. can from Paul. Subject to any voluntary raising of that amount by Ray Leach when he testifies, um, we've negotiated at least $2.5 million of state money to be matched with matched against ours. And this is, and the state anticipates that they, their monies will also be uh, ultimately treated as a grant? Yes. Okay. And so, uh, if I understand it, can these monies be used for operational components? Councilman, uh, can the they be used for capital projects? Uh, right. Uh, I'm going to go through the, the list of business elements because the way you described it initially, it was the kind of thing like professional services. And I agree, it's really tough uh, the, to get a startup business because you still have the same professional expenses. Right. As anybody else, but they don't really put. Don't, don't want to hurt my my friends in the lawyering profession, but they don't put a whole lot of retail sales on the top of the line, or or employ people out there uh, in that respect. So, councilman, in fact, these these are for professional services. This is not a funding program for the businesses. This is not a loan program, nor an equity investment program. Okay, so no equity, no operations, no nothing other than primarily the professional services which I would probably log into accounting, uh, legal, um, maybe patent work, uh, things of that nature. And, and again, Councilman, we'll hear just a little bit of testimony of the types of things these business owners have received, but yes, that's correct. It is not It is not working capital. It is not that type of funding. Okay. Uh, how often or how, how long has this kind of a program been running? So uh, it's my understanding that this has been a program of third frontier from its beginning. Um, the entrepreneurial services program for many annual funding cycles, or many three-year funding cycles now. This is the first time I recall, that I can recall, right. that the county has stepped up to be a matching funder for Third Frontier. Right. Um, some of our smaller funding that's been provided to Jumpstart over the years in, in the tens or hundreds of thousands has counted towards the local match. Um, this is the first time we've been asked for a significant amount of money directly in this way. And uh, I think I heard that at least minimum of 40% will be going to minority uh, businesses in their startup. Uh, what is the, the, the I, I know you gave some big numbers as far as potential comp, uh, companies. Is there a specific minimum that they have to hit as far as companies identified in this first nine months? For this to be considered a success? Um, so again, um, Jumpstart has agreed that there will be a minimum of 230 companies assisted this year. They've agreed to that. And so if, are we taking 5 million divided by 230 companies and coming up with an anticipated amount that, that they will all get? Is, is that... Uh, an... Again, Councilman, the, the service model is to provide the services to the companies. So it's not 
a, the company does not receive a check. So if services are provided to the companies at no cost to the companies. It's not an exact equal amount. It's not a, necessarily a spending account that the company can decide. There are services provided by the professionals that are paid with this money, but they're um, provided in a way that meets the needs of the companies. There's an assessment piece, which Jumpstart staff themselves do, to assess the company, talk to the owner, and determine what kind of help the owner needs. And after that assessment, there's, a, there's actually the providing of the services, the professionals working with the company owner being paid by this money, not being paid by the company. Okay, the funds are gonna go to the professional service company. Who selects that I wanna use X lawyer or versus Y lawyer? Who's doing that? Um, there are a number of partners that Jumpstart works with. Um, Jumpstart itself is quite influential in this, but there are partners such as, for example, the Urban League of Greater Cleveland. Um, Felicia has come to, to talk about that if needed. So um, the partners themselves in the areas where they have some knowledge, expertise, have their own professional, professionals they work with. So the company that's going to get the money, are they in turn also giving any kind of guarantees? that they're going to repay any of this money back to Jumpstart? Right. I'm going, I, I am not on the front lines of these day-to-day -day programs. I'm going to defer to the later testimony um, the commitment that the companies are asked to make, which is not insignificant. You know, whether that includes um, a, a possibility of payment for services, I will defer to others. But there is a commitment. There's skin in the game companies have to show, com owners have to show to receive this help. I'm just trying to figure out our dollar transfers out of our pocket goes into Jumpstart. It then goes to payment of services. If I am the startup business, am I being told I've got to use this service provider or am I electing that I can use those funds? If it is my tracing? understanding that the business owner does not do the shopping for the service providers. However, there there is you know a process of making sure there's a fit. But this is, again, not an account that the business owner can draw on to pay, hire people their choice. How are we monitoring, we, the county, because these are our dollars, how are we monitoring those 230? So, Councilman, as we do with all of our um, economic development loan and grant programs, our staff receives periodic reports listing every transaction that's being done, which we have for our review. Um, we actually upload information from some of this into our public quarterly performance system. But our staff also uses this information to compare against the contract to make sure what is being done is what the contract says is being done. So, of course, very specifically for the outcomes, because that money is on the table, but more than the outcomes, we'll be reviewing the reports we get to make sure the, the way the program is being run this year is the way we've been told it's going to be run. And do you know anything about the history of, of how Third Frontier has their funds flow to these professional services? We have, Councilman, because we've not been directly involved, we have not previously tracked exactly how much goes on to each provider. We, of course, will be getting that information for the ones we, we help pay for, but in the past, that's not been reported to us. Okay, but I assume we did some due diligence before we uh, said we're going we're gonna to invest 200 or $2.5 million into a matching fund as to how these funds get used. So, Councilman, the main thing we've done is verify with the nonprofits that are um, meant to be involved that, yes, they are, in fact, involved, and, yes, the program does operate the way we've been told it operates. That's been the main level of our diligence. Well, professional services are not going to be nonprofit, I would assume. No, but the non nonprofits assist in paying for them. I, I, it's, it's, in many cases, through the nonprofits. Yeah, I mean, I'm just trying to... Uh, follow the money, as the old uh, as the old phrase used to go. Uh, I'm trying to follow it from our taxpayer to Jumpstart to whoever the recipient is for the benefit of these 230 startup companies. And if you're saying that they don't really select their professional service provider, it's being provided to them. You must choose from some certain thing. Well, I guess we're going to have to get into this with Mr. Reese because I, I want to find out um, if I'm a startup company. I'd like to know that I'm selecting my attorney or my accountant uh, in, in this regard to know that I've got right. a relationship because the attorney-client relationship 
is the business right. to the attorney. It's not some, some right. third party doesn't sit in the middle between that relationship. Right. So again, Councilman, yes, I will, uh, if I may, defer some of that. But what I will say is we, of course, will be receiving reports as to where the county's money goes, which therefore we will have the information how our money is spent. Okay. Well, I just want to make sure that um, I know the purpose is great. I just want to make sure the functionality is, is also commensurate with the, uh, if on the startup business, those are hard things to do, and these are hard dollars to get, I also understand. Professional service dollars are the hardest ones for, uh, for anybody to finance uh, because they don't produce a new product, they don't produce R&D, they don't produce operational, they don't produce uh, uh, capital equipment investments or anything of that nature. So, are there any questions based on my questions from any, anybody on the council, uh, Mr. Miller, your guest uh, for the council? If you have any questions, feel free. I'm not trying to solicit if you don't have any, you know, but if you, if you do. Okay, all right. Well, let's keep on going with the, uh, do you have a, a sequence of speakers as to how we're going to be, be hearing you? Yes, Councilman. Uh, Ray will start and um, he will then in turn introduce the three business owners and um, Felicia from the Urban League to speak after him. Okay, thanks. Mr. Chair. Felicia. Mr. Chairman, I also expect to have some, but I want to see how much gets covered in the presentations. Sounds great. Okay. Good afternoon. My name is Ray Leach, and I'm the CEO of Jumpstart, and it's a pleasure to be with all of you this afternoon. Um, we are here today to request the support from Council for $2.5 million, which will leverage $6 million in programmatic support from the Third Frontier in calendar 2022. Uh, to provide critical business services and entrepreneurial support ecosystem building activities provided by Jumpstart in collaboration with numerous partners serving tech startups in Cuyahoga County. I'd also like to introduce Telianjay. Do you want to come up? And ordinarily, I don't interrupt in the middle, but uh, just, to, just to make sure we have complete clarity. So total fund will be $8.5 million if I understood the math. The Six third million front, plus two point five. Is correct. That, is that the the, correct. The total budget for the entrepreneurial services program in Cuyahoga County in twenty twenty eight will be eight point five million dollars. Okay. In twenty twenty eight. Excuse me. Twenty twenty two. I thought man. Would be. Uh, would be. Uh, <laughs> so, yes. Life moves fast. I didn't move. I didn't realize I lost six years there for. Thanks. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Good afternoon, Chairman Shran, and to the committee. My name is Telian J. Thomas. I serve as the Chief Operations and Relationship Officer for Jumpstart. I'm just going to share a little bit more context about Jumpstart as an organization, um, the Entrepreneurial Service Provider Program specifically, um, and then we'll be followed by our entrepreneurs and community partners who help to execute this program. So uh, just to remind you, our mission is to unlock the full potential of entrepreneurship to transform entire communities. One of the important and critical ways that we achieve this, particularly in Cuyahoga County, um, is through providing business services to tech startups. Um, we've been doing this work since 2004. It has definitely led to robust partnerships between the state of Ohio, um, who coordinates and implements the Economic Development Service Program uh, in partnership with Jumpstart and the many other community partners that we spoke of. And as importantly, this work is provided free of charge to the startup companies in our county. Respectfully, as we said, we're here to request the support in the amount of $2.5 million uh, for the Ohio Third Frontier Entrepreneurial Services Provider Program. Um, as you heard from Director Herdick, this request is separate and distinct from past support that we have um, generously received from the county. Uh, the past support from the county has provided um, been provided in the form of a loan to Jumpstart. And those loan dollars were able to be matched with Third Frontier's resources to result in Jumpstart's ability to own equity in the companies that we invested in. What we are discussing with you today and what we are asking your support for is a forgivable loan um, that would support, again, providing direct business services to tech startups um, in Cuyahoga County, um, serving minimally uh, 230 
uh, companies in 2022. Again, I would reiterate these services would be provided to these companies free of charge. Uh, this support will help Jumpstart and our partners leverage, as uh, Mr. Leach just shared with you, uh, up to $6 million in grants from the Ohio Third Frontier. Um, these services we know are very critical business services um, that need to be provided at scale, um, and they allow us to, uh, the companies, to attract millions of dollars of private investment along with creating um, new jobs in our county for 2022. We are very fortunate um, to have the support and collaboration of a number of community partners. Um, when we talk about the Ohio Third Frontier um, Program and the Entrepreneurial Services Provider Program specifically, the goal is to help startup tech companies develop their business plans, raise the capital that they need to grow, create jobs in real time, and generate revenues right here in Cuyahoga County. This work is achieved, as I said, in collaboration with many organizations that align with Jumpstart, both in mission and in purpose, um, to work daily in support with uh, support our entrepreneurs and small businesses throughout Cuyahoga County. Uh, one of the last things I would like to share with you before we um, hear directly from some of those partners and entrepreneurs is really the essence of what the resources, there were some great questions raised, of what the resources go towards in order to provide these business services. Um, so our network of providers um, work to offer a wide array range, excuse me, of services to our startup um, tech entrepreneurs. Um, this can be cohort-based accelerators. So this is very intensive, high-touch um, cohort work that uh, addresses uh, specialized topics um, that they need for their business development, one-on-one um, -on -one advising services. You heard of the professional services that are procured um, and provided to support them, ranging from accounting, finance, uh, legal, et cetera. And we're also pleased that we have a very strong mentoring service that's also provided uh, to these entrepreneurs. And this work, in part, is supported by the Burton D. Morgan Foundation and is known as the Burton D. Morgan mentoring program. Uh, beyond these things, um, we've also been able to be nimble and adjust in the context of the pandemic that we've all been navigating for. Um, we have found that these types of services and supports as well as others um, were um, in higher demand um, as the pandemic uh, ensued. And so we were able to pivot and continue to sustain providing these um, services through a virtual format, ensuring that companies were, were being supported. Uh, the other thing that I would uh, mention is that, you know, overall uh, Jumpstart remains uh, relevant in understanding the real needs of our companies and startups, and we do our best to re be highly responsive and remain um, nimble in these climates. So with that, I will turn it back over to Ray, who will talk a little bit about the impact of the work. So when you think of the entrepreneurial services program in Cuyahoga County, if you look at the screen above here from 2018 to 2021, the companies that were directly assisted or provided support to generated a $1.9 billion economic impact in Cuyahoga County, almost a billion dollars of revenue, $914 million of revenue. Um, uh, were generated. Um, Ten percent, ninety-one million of that was generated by Black and Latino tech startups. Uh, almost four thousand, three thousand, three thousand nine hundred and sixty new tech jobs were created and/or sustained over the last four years. Um, you can see in terms of state and state startup and local taxes of ninety-one million revenue generated by women-founded tech startups of over six hundred million in Cuyahoga County, and then the payroll to employees of these Cuyahoga County tech companies totaled five hundred ninety-two million dollars. So the average economic impact of the ESP program exceeds. Uh, five hundred million dollars annually uh, for the county, and that's been its uh, its recent history. When you think of calendar twenty twenty two, we are committing to uh, support at least two hundred and thirty tech startups. Will be assisted forty percent managed by women, black or Hispanic, Latino persons. Three hundred and fifty new jobs created, six hundred uh, jobs retained, and one hundred and sixty million dollars of new capital invested uh, in these firms. 
just to answer a couple questions that were asked a little bit earlier, the Ohio Third Frontier was founded in 2003. It is granted $2.2 billion uh, over that period of time. Jumpstart has been one of the largest recipients of Third Frontier support. We are responsible for uh, Northeast Ohio and uh, more recently Northwest Ohio. Um, the Third Frontier, Paul did a great job of saying a large portion, about $25 million a year, the Third Frontier is granting statewide to provide business services through intermediaries such as Jumpstart. So Jumpstart has peer organizations in other parts of the state. We are the entity that's responsible for uh, and is accountable for all the monies uh, raised and spent. We survey our clients every six months. So to the, some of the questions around how will you absolutely know who are the firms assisted, how much revenue has each firm generated, What's the, de the, uh, the, uh, the employment gain? So we survey hundreds of companies every six months uh, as part of this program. So the accountability from the state to Jumpstart is quite high. Um, and we have been successfully, this program was founded, the ESP program was founded in 2008 and Jumpstart has been responsible, not just for the direct services we're providing, but to the services of all of our partner organizations are also providing. So in a scenario where an entrepreneur might come to Jumpstart or this network for services and they were dissatisfied or they had an issue or a problem or a challenge, it's Jumpstart's job to resolve that uh, and make sure that there are uh, services made available, uh, and the mix and breadth of services is quite long. Almost anything a tech startup entrepreneur could need, might need, uh, Jumpstart is either has programs directly or with our partners, or is creating programs. As an example, we took hundreds of companies through the PPP process. Uh, during the pandemic. That was certainly not anything we anticipated that our companies might need, uh, but that's a good example of Telianjay's comments a little bit earlier around the, the constant evolution. One last thing I'll share before I introduce our, our partners here is that um, Cuyahoga County's had incredible um, benefits in the tech sector as it relates to tech startups during the pandemic. You may or may not be aware, but the venture capital world has dramatically expanded during the pandemic. So I think the idea that our culture and society is going through so much change in the digitization of many industries, the startups in Cuyahoga County are very, very much at the leading edge of benefiting from that. So as Jumpstart services have evolved, and of course we're investing along with many others, uh, but there's now startups in Cuyahoga County that are raising 50 million or more quite regularly. That was not the case five years ago. Um, and so maybe there's a little bit of a silver lining, um, not that anyone uh, is happy with the pandemic, but it has very much accelerated the early stage tech entrepreneurial ecosystem in Cuyahoga County. So with that- um, well, Before we get going, well, yeah. uh, I think it's a good time to stop right now with, uh, right. with you and uh, Ms. Thomas, if there's questions for either. Um, yes. Okay, so a couple questions for you, if, sure. just to kind of give me some clarity. So when we talk about the 230 tech startup assisted, just give me an idea of what is a tech startup? What is a company that would say, I'm a tech company? What would that look like? And how many employees on the average do they usually have? So think of anyone with an idea that relates to technology. That is a client of this Could program. Could be talking a one person out of their home. Absolutely. So we engage with hundreds of entrepreneurs in Cuyahoga County that might have something on a napkin, but we don't begin to count them as an active client till we've spent at least 20 hours with them. So there will be maybe thousands of entrepreneurs in Cuyahoga County that we will engage with and assist, but we don't begin counting them as an act of what we consider an active client until we've spent 20 hours with that entrepreneur. So most of the entrepreneurs that we engage with will have revenues of, of certainly under 10 million. There are some provisions. We are not allowed to support entrepreneurs at a particular size. You know, they've grown beyond needing 
uh, support from the community. You know, they can they can theoretically afford to pay for these services themselves. But I would say the average entrepreneur for this program that we engage with has less than three employees. They're very, very, very small. They're typically the founder. Um, now, there are scenarios and occasions, and one of the things that's great about this program is that um, we are able to use these dollars to accelerate the growth of small companies and to become much larger companies. So it's not like um, we might meet an entrepreneur, they're a solo entrepreneur, um, they, after our assistance, and maybe a lot of our assistance results in them being able to raise capital. Because in, in our world, the most meaningful thing after getting great guidance and support is the ability to raise 500,000, a million, 5 million, 10 million in capital. And it's that capital that typically accelerates or creates the job growth. So there is no entrepreneur too small. Um, and you asked about industry, and we did provide in these slides a breakdown of the industries that we're serving, but advanced manufacturing, biotech, healthcare, um, uh, software companies for, for certain that serve all different industries. But um, if someone comes to us and says, I'm in hospitality, but I, and actually there's quite a bit of technology now in the hospitality industry that didn't exist five years ago. So we're very much, um, oh, the door is open. And of course we have subject matter experts um, in, our, uh, in our entrepreneurial and economic development ecosystem that have particular areas of focus. Um, whether it's in advanced energy, that's a big area of focus of this program, biotech, software, advanced manufacturing. And again, it's this collaborative network that allows the system to meet the entrepreneur where they're at and not try to give them a service that they don't want or aren't going to directly benefit from. If I may follow. Sure. So the question about equity or capital expenses that's not really a place where perhaps most of these smaller are really including anybody because they are a one or two man in their home office, not needing the bricks and mortar type of investments. And what they need are the professional services to make sure they're set up correctly, that uh, they're filing their taxes correctly. You are, but at the same time, a lot of these entrepreneurs will want to create an app or create, they'll want to leverage technology. Um, so um, Jumpstart runs and manages uh, as a part of this, the kind of the, the investor network, you know, where we're not, we're not getting any benefit from it, but we'll connect that entrepreneur to angel investors or to folks who are willing to bet on, on her or his idea. Um, so there are there certainly are scenarios where um, we'll meet an entrepreneur that has a tech idea and is able to what we call bootstrap. In other words, just do it themselves. But the vast majority of these entrepreneurs need capital and a huge benefit of this program. So in this case, the total budget in Cuyahoga County would be approximately eight million. We're saying it's going to generate at least 160 million of private investment that will go into these companies this year. So the leverage, the typical third frontier analysis, so we've been analyzed on the third frontier given the amount of money that we've been awarded and trusted with very significantly. The typical leverage is uh, over, a, let's say, a three to four year period of time is 34 to one. For every dollar of state grants remitted by the third frontier, it's generated $34 back to the state of Ohio. So this leverage, you know, to your, to your question or comment around the right person at the right time with the right advice that has the experience can protect the entrepreneur for him, from him or herself and maybe their lack of experience. Like most of these entrepreneurs have never raised money uh, from a, an angel investor or, or go to the SBIR or go to the STTR. These are federal programs. So all that coaching and guidance is enabling them to get access to resources that they wouldn't otherwise be able to efficiently uh, and effectively achieve. Can I just ask one? Sure. So would you say that, you know, this pandemic that we've been through and the creative ways that people are trying to uh, perhaps break out into their own, the unemployment rate is low, but yet we still have would you say that this might be somewhat of where people are going? Is that they're trying to 
start small entrepreneurial companies within the scope of their yeah. own residences and perhaps then is, is is this are these opportunities that we're seeing that are different than what Absolutely, yes, absolutely, and I forget the number. I didn't, I didn't think to look at it, but the state of Ohio, the brand new business starts in 2021 in the state of Ohio, I believe was up 40%, like 80,000 more businesses started, meaning registered, with the state of Ohio last year than in any year in the history of the state. And do we know that the good percentage of that was tech? It is, very much. Um, and, and I think it's just indicative of um, this whole idea that our culture and our economy is being digitized. You know, no one would have thought with the power of a smartphone or the power of these tools that we're using that so much of our economy has the opportunity to leverage technology. So it's, I think that's, this is very much the case, and the the fact that the third that the state of Ohio has made such significant investments in this ecosystem, um, I think is is it has paid off and will pay off even more. There are no other states in the U.S. that have this public, private, and philanthropic partnership that's created these ecosystems. So Ohio is very, very unique in that regard, and I think is going to play incredibly well to the future of the county. Um, in, in this year, but um, one other comment just for context, and Paul mentioned, these, this award, this ESP program is typically funded every three years. And we are, this is the last year of a new, of, a, of the three years. So we are preparing in the middle of May, Jumpstart is preparing in the middle of May, so a month from now, to submit a new multi-year grant proposal that will fund the work we're talking about now that will fund this work over the next through 2025, which will be a continuation since 2008. So this is an incredibly important asset for entrepreneurs in the community who can't afford to you know, access these services. Um, and I think the last thing I would say, and I believe you have access to this, Jumpstart does do an incredibly rigorous economic impact report annually. And actually last week, um, my team shared with me, we do have the economic impact for just tech startups in Cuyahoga County in 2021. I can make sure everybody gets this, but um, so this is the ESP program in the county. So in 2021, it generated a $468 million economic impact, 4,000 jobs, 300 million in labor income. It directly assisted 2,700 households 24 million in state taxes and local taxes. Give it to us. We have that. You, okay. Okay. Great. So, I just want to give assurance to council that we measure everything, and we uh, take the support of any funder, uh, including obviously public funding, incredibly serious because we're accountable to you and accountable to the community. Um, so, I'm glad glad that you have that. I may, Mr. Leach, how do you um, track, because this is done not in a bricks and mortar environment where you see it, these tech companies can be anywhere. So how do you control loaning to those that are located here in Cuyahoga County and that they aren't using that as maybe a satellite where their main, I mean, how, how would you? That's yeah, it's a great question. So we have what's called a client engagement letter. So we have every, every relationship documented uh, and verified. Um, so in order for, this was something that was implemented a handful of years ago, pre-COVID with the state of Ohio, and that is we are unable or not able to provide services to any entrepreneur or business that isn't verified in the county. So there's a process that we run. So if, if we were to meet at a coffee shop and I was to talk about uh, ways that Jumpstart could help you, you wouldn't be able to, other than maybe you know having a half hour conversation with me, you wouldn't be able to procure services for free from Jumpstart or any of our partners until that client engagement letter is documented and certified. Also, all of our partners operate on a common data system. Um, so Jumpstart actually was a pioneer back in 2008 in this, building the first systems to do this collaboration. And actually, we're going through a major uh, update of that system that will launch here in July. And so we can look inside our systems and see 
who are all the partners that have connected to that entrepreneur? What, how have they benefited him or her? What progress? So we set up what are called milestones. So if we're engaged with an entrepreneur, we'll, we'll sit down with her and talk about what are the most important milestones you can achieve. There might be a milestone or two that this person is going to help you with. But then after that milestone, let's say maybe it's a legal issue. Once that milestone is achieved, they, we will pass the baton to another uh, service provider. It could be another organization. It could be another third party, you know, attorney, um, or it could be a staff person um, that is at one of these organizations. So the, uh, in order to optimize the outcomes for the least amount of money, it, it requires collaboration as opposed to, you know, trying to have everything in one place. Um, and you certainly can't replicate the expertise of like the, uh, the Urban League or other industry expert organizations at a single entity like a jumpstart. So the collaborative element of this work is, uh, is fundamental. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. Sarah? Okay. I have one. Sure. Go ahead. Welcome. Mr. Chairman, to, to Mr. Leach, there was one concept put forward that, that I didn't get a good handle on, which is the idea of a cohort-based accelerator. Can mm -hmm. you tell me what that is? Yeah, so there's a very regular and consistent um, programs across at Jumpstart and across a handful of entities that will take a particular challenge. Let's say, uh, I'll use, I don't want to get too geeky, product market fit. So one of the biggest challenges in a startup tech company, the entrepreneur believes they've, they've envisioned the greatest thing since sliced bread. It's going to change people's lives but they haven't really talked to any customers yet or prospective customers. So we and others in the network run Accelerator, think of it like group education programs where a, a half a dozen entrepreneurs who are facing a similar problem will be together for two, three hours every Friday for 12 weeks. Mm -hmm. And so we'll do a deep dive in, in the disciplines that it takes to inform what their individual and or team strategy should be to solve particular problems. Product market fit is kind of a classic one. Another one is digital marketing. So obviously with Google and everything you can do out there, the traditional ways of marketing these technologies are, are not as efficient. We don't have a tremendous amount of digital marketing expertise in our broad economy, let alone in our startup economy. So we run cohort programs that will give, that will make that entrepreneur or enable that entrepreneur to be expert in a particular issue or challenge. Thanks very much. That's a big help. Great. Thank you. Um, you, Mr. Reed, you, you said something about 20 hours before uh, you sit down and have a coffee. Uh, what we call an active client. Yeah, before we become a, an active client. So at some point, when they become an active client, would they be a recipient of these funds? When, so he got over the 20 hours, he said, okay, this... We, so we, all of the services are provided to the entrepreneur at no cost. We never transfer money to the entrepreneur to procure those services. We manage all the dollars. We match all the dollars to provide those services for free to the entrepreneur. So unlike, you know, a little bit to your earlier questioning, if, if an entrepreneur needs a particular IP counsel from an attorney, Jumpstart would hire that attorney and pay that attorney on behalf of the entrepreneur. What protect, I mean, just not to get too deep mm -hmm. in the weeds, but yeah. what protects the confidentiality of that if you are in the middle of that? Um, well, there still is uh, attorney-client privilege. So we are not, not, we're not in that meeting with the entrepreneur and the attorney, per se. So Engage the attorney by dollars, but not engage correct. In any of the content. Correct. We're not in the middle of that conversation. Now, attorneys are one example. I could give you dozens of other examples, like talent recruiting. So one of the big challenges a lot of these companies need is they need that great VP of sales. So Jumpstart would provide resources to enable that company to pay a recruiter or hire that person, and we're not in the middle of the, you know, um, the conversation between the recruiter and the company. We're just the enabler of that service. Okay. We're helping to pay for that service. Of the $8.5 million, how much of a fee will Jumpstart be taking for doing any of those things? Zero. So when you go out and find that HR firm, where's, I mean, somebody's got to be 
go out there and well we're paying them i mean well yeah. so so jumpstart identify i mean of other of the no 100 100 hr firms that could be providing services to this company somebody has to boil that down to get to the the two that you're going to present to them and say make a selection or something like that who's doing that work I mean, so jumpstart staff is doing that work so jumpstart has you know a, a team of people that help vet now we also have professional service providers in the community that can that do provide some of those services pro bono as well um so somebody's gotta still do the work to to find even that pro bono guy correct so, not, so not, jumpstart jumpstart it? staff does that work the third frontier does support so for a little context and i realize this is like its own little universe it used to be that there was 20 entities in Cuyahoga County that the state of Ohio would directly grant money to to do these services. In 2008, they said, we want one organization to deal with, and that organization will deal with the other 19, and that is Jumpstart. So Jumpstart is responsible, and now I think it's 16 in Cuyahoga County at the moment. The number changes depending on the RFP. So Jumpstart's responsible for all the activities, all the outcomes of the collaborative, and we are the, we're the largest entity, we're the most uh, back office capable entity, and we're supporting those other organizations in doing that work. So if uh, one of our partner organizations goes out and is working on a particular issue and they have an issue or a problem or a challenge, they come to Jumpstart and we work with them to resolve that challenge, whether it's with the entrepreneur or with it's a service provider. So the state of Ohio is funding Jumpstart in part to play that quarterback coordination role, not just in the day-to-day -to, -day to the entrepreneur, but also all the accountability back to the state because it is a very significant investment and of time and energy to be able to be accountable and responsible for the entire network. Well, I, and I wasn't discounting that. That's why yeah. I was trying to figure out where does that come from? Is that out of their $6 million? So it's out of the budget, the total budget, the total ESP budget in Northeast Ohio is a little over 11 million. I'm talking about the dollars here just that are Cuyahoga County. Yeah. Because we're responsible for a larger footprint than that. So the dollars that pay for all that activity come out of the total the total uh, support from that, the state. Your, your fee is coming out of that piece then someplace. I mean, Basically, yeah. In me, terms of the free lunch you, you question. You for free. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. So the, the, you know, there's no such thing as a free lunch. I get it. And the state is who's providing. Um, now, we also have to raise match for that. So Jumpstart is responsible for raising match, 100% match for the entire proposal. Now, oftentimes, principally, our partners come to these proposals with match, but if it's a valuable service that we want to see happen, Jumpstart then steps up and finds public, private, philanthropic organizations to provide that match. There's nothing that this state provides in this program. It's 100% grants, but there's nothing that doesn't require match. And the reason for that is the state of Ohio wants to know that there's buy-in at the local level on the programs and activities of the third frontier. So, so that has been a, uh, that, that's a truism kind of of the program to make sure that the community believes the, third, the state money is delivering great benefits. Uh, that match component is, uh, is a fundamental piece, whether it's, you know, it's always been there. I'm not adverse to a fee because there has to be a quid pro quo. So has to be something going on there. I just didn't, would, was trying to identify is our 2.5 being used to, to help cover some of your overhead costs? And if the answer is yes, what is it? And if it's, the answer is no, then somebody's got to be picking it up. The way we, I think the, um, the, the simplest answer would be jump starts charging, or we're allowed to charge 20% against the state grant. Um, in this scenario, if the county would be more comfortable with none of that going to support our back office, that would be acceptable to jumpstart if that was important to the, to this body or to the county. Um, but if it was, if the dollars came in like all the other dollars, it would be about a 20% overhead kind of so construct. Million, I mean, just for simplistic purposes for my simplistic right. brain. So 2 million of our 2.5, if that's, that's exactly 20%, uh, Covering overhead, all the things you can need to do to, to identify that. Profession. Two million to the entrepreneurs and five hundred thousand for overhead. Yeah. Okay. Right. Now, well, one other thing too, just for we don't um, every all, every other dollar in this program is a grant. 
we understand in this circumstance that you know makes sense to be a forgivable loan. We're fine with that. You know, we want to be held accountable. We have no problem. But I don't want you to think that um, uh, the county is getting unfavorable treatment, or that you know, 100% of the other monies in this program are grant dollars. And if this, if we do what we say we're going to do, and you feel that that's satisfactory, then 100% of the dollars are grant. It would be grant money. Um, again, because we're not benefiting, we're not from the activity, we're trying to accomplish the goals and objectives that we've laid out to the Third Frontier through their process. And based on at least the numbers that, I, that you presented to us, we're looking at approximately 1,000 jobs either created or retained based on the 350 and the, and the 600. Correct. Okay, so um, if we take the, the 500,000 off the top, then we can come up with a pretty good number as far as the ratio of yeah. 1,000 jobs we're, doing, we're having an impact. Now, obviously, it's everybody else's job, jobs com combined. Does Jumpstart take any equity position in any of these startups? Not in return for these services. There could be a scenario with the support that the county has provided where ultimately we invest sure. in the Later company as well. Right. And we part we share in that, um, but there there is no uh, fees generated by this money that the county would be lending to Jumpstart. Zero fees. Because we're right now roughly, you said three. I I, I figured a thousand is roughly three to four employees that we're talking about at this stage of startup. There's no equity component that you're gonna you're correct. Gonna take. When they go out and get the five million or the ten million, then I assume that that's when you step up and you say, hey, now it's time for us to. That, that is true, and also it's unconstitutional for Jumpstart to take an equity position in these companies in conjunction with support from the state of Ohio. Okay. So we are not allowed uh, to generate an, uh, any equity ownership in the companies as a result of this support. Um, you know, the railroads and the canals took care of that 180 years ago. Part of the reason for my questioning, as you probably can surmise, is the people who will be writing the article about what we're talking about are probably not even in the room. Right, right. They're watching this via video live stream, and so I want them to hear right. these, these questions that are being yeah. asked. Yeah, uh, yeah. If you don't bring them out, then I'm going to try right. my best to make sure. <laughs> no problem. So I'm sorry about that. No, no worries. Uh, no worries. I, I see that as part of my responsibility to Absolutely. make sure the record gets. And, and for anybody who has been to an airport, uh, in the last three to four years, you have to realize when you talk, say hospitality and tech are coming together, uh, I haven't seen a person writing an order down in an airport in probably three or four years. Right. Everything is on multiple iPads that are throughout the airport, and they're all being delivered through a single source of food distribution. They're not being delivered by the individual restaurants anymore. You go to the iPad and it miraculously appears within minutes of you doing that throughout the concourse. So, uh, and it's a single source of, of uh, in that regard too. Um, regards to uh, these funds, so the entrepreneur, the, the one, two, three, four person, maybe they're financially well off, uh, and it's their vision that they're going to use that money for their R&D or for their uh, for their capital, whatever they have to do if it's. Uh, some kind of thing of that nature, or even a, an app takes takes money. Are they allowed to still come to you, even if they have money in their pocket, and say, "Hey, I'm still a that three, four. Every dollar I can use, not for those things that are going to actually drive a product." Uh, are they still allowed to come to you? They don't have they, to be. They, they don't have to be. They don't have to be broke or poor. Or, correct. Uh, There's no means testing for the. Uh, um, uh, and the, there's many reasons for that, but the most important reason for that is um, we are focused on people that are here to create jobs. I mean, this is a nonprofit economic development activity, and we believe that that individual, whether they do or don't have resources, given their passion, their interest, their hunger, they have a greater proclivity and an opportunity to create jobs. So when we sit down with an entrepreneur in the tech program, if, we, if this was to happen, we'd sit down with an entrepreneur and he or she said, you know what, I've created this thing. I'm, I feel like I'm kind of done. I'm just curious about this, this, and this. Jumpstart might say, well, here's a modest program here, a modest program there. We are looking for people that want to create jobs. If you don't want to create jobs, the third frontier is all about creating jobs. And typically that happens through attracting private capital. It doesn't have to happen that way. Um, but to your point, 
you know, regardless of what uh, assets an individual has, if they're here to create jobs in Cuyahoga County, that's what we're here to help them do. Jumpstart has this region. Who has the Cincinnati, there's the Columbus region, just for curiosity. So Jumpstart is responsible for Northeast Ohio, that's 21 counties. We're also responsible for Northwest Ohio, which is 19 counties. That's new, that it started in 2019. An organization called Rev1 Ventures is responsible for Central Ohio, the greater Columbus market. Uh, the Voinovich Center at Ohio University is responsible for Southeast Ohio. Uh, an organization called the Entrepreneurship Center is responsible for West Central or Dayton, Ohio. And then Cincy Tech is responsible for Southwest Ohio. So there's five organizations. We also work collaboratively all five organizations because we're learning from each other and trying to optimize and oftentimes we'll have companies um, who maybe raised money from a VC out of town in Columbus and they have an interest in a company in Cleveland. So we're constantly leveraging those relationships and each of those organizations has the same role in their region that Jumpstart has in this region. I just assume that, that if there's 88 counties, you got almost half of them, it sounds like, based on what you just described. Uh, we do. Yeah, we have just over 50% of the state's population is in a region uh, that Jumpstart's accountable for. And, of course, the funding for Jumpstart's work in Northwest Ohio comes from Northwest Ohio. So do we the get, match, the match funding. Their, their $2.5 million is coming from somebody up in that area. Yeah, and it's, it's much less. Yeah. So the population is 1.5 million in Northwest Ohio. It's a, it's about 4 million in Northeast Ohio. Total population. Is there participation from Summit County and 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 Geauga County in 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 this same conversation? There, uh, not in this specific conversation right now, um, but there has been in the past. We have had public sector funding from cities and counties uh, across Northeast Ohio over the years. These monies will all stay in Cuyahoga County. This, this These dollars five. are Cuyahoga County dollars. All right, thank you. Any questions based on my questions? I think that was answered whether you're getting similar um, investment from different counties, and you just said in the past, Geauga, we have, Summit, yes. and the new counties. Numerous counties in Northeast Ohio have supported Wayne, Lorraine, Lake. Um, so there's been different, um, certainly COVID has is, is impacted the scenario quite significantly of late. So our partnerships are evolving, um, but we have had very significant public sector support, again, because we're able to generate tax base and economic outcomes that, that are measurable um, is I think the rationale. But they're not regional based. You're regional, but the, the dollars are not regional. Well, pretty much every time we partner with a county, we are focused on their county. Sure. You know, so, you know, we're not, we understand that. Um, so that has been, um, that's been the way the program has worked. And if we do things at a different scale in a particular county, it's typically because that county is, now Cuyahoga County represents, um, depending on the, the metric, generally 50% of all of our outcomes in Northeast Ohio are coming from Cuyahoga County. It is the engine for the Northeast Ohio region in the tech space. Um, so it's a very, very significant um, uh, geography for our work. We, I think we also shared, we have a list of every company in every district in county, you know, so we know who they are, where they are. Um, so again, this idea of tracking, measuring, engaging, um, so we're happy to provide more details in that regard if you're interested. So we're roughly 20, uh, we're roughly 30, uh, a third of the, the way through the year. Uh, and you got to get the rest of this working in the last two thirds of the year. Yeah. So jumpstart is, um, you know, we haven't slowed down. So, you know, this is going to help us. I mean, we're what, four months into the year. Um, in these cases, we're spent, we've been spending our own money or spending other, other money. You know, we're trying to raise money uh, to be able to fully fund this, and we're gearing up to make a very large commitment to the Third Frontier in 30 days for another three years. So the, the pandemic brought a whole bunch of challenges to everybody, including Jumpstart. So our mix of grant money coming into our programs has been, is evolving um, and so this would be incredibly helpful for us to bridge uh, to the end, all the way to the end of this year, because we're planning on continuing to do this at this scale or potentially a greater scale in the next three years 
with this uh, our, the proposal that we're going to respond to in the next 30 days. So with that in mind, any thoughts and ideas from any of you around opportunities um, in Cuyahoga County that might be new approaches or new ideas? Because we're literally going to be starting to write the proposal here in the next week or so. Of the, of the um, 950 proposed jobs before December 31st that mm -hmm. talked about, how many of those are in place right now? I think what the current the current um, metric was was it 600? Your target is 600 retained. Yeah, I think it was. Have we have we got to? Have you you said you've been at it for four year four months? Are we already even started? Because I assume. That oh yes, yeah. I mean, the, our companies are growing, so I couldn't give you the exact number at this minute, but our companies are growing. They're raising capital. Things are getting better, stronger, in the tech sector in Cuyahoga County. Well, the reason why I ask that, because Paul indicates that come December 31st, we're going to see 1,000 people. And I just was right. curious as to whether we're already at 250 and he's got to, and he's going to be asking you to, to show us the 750 or the 700 uh, additional people, or are we at uh, two people and you're, he's got to... He's going to have to show the whole uh, night. We could, I could get back to you with the Thank number. Thank you. I appreciate you that. Know, my I, guess is we're that, probably. That, uh, Paul knows what my, my next question is going to be. And about another two months, I'm going to want to know where we are on the 350, where are we right. on the 600. Because, right, right, right. Because as, as you should. Yeah, well, and yeah, because this is unusual for us to be doing right. a grant. We, we usually, as you know, uh, we've done some great work together with Third Frontier. And you've taken funds, you put it to work, and actually you've repaid the county. This one is going to be repaid by those 350 jobs and those 600 retained jobs. Any questions? Yes. So can you um, give me what the range is about what a Cuyahoga County tech startup is? Like, are they someone, as you referenced, mm -hmm. on a napkin and an idea, or is it someone who's been in business since 2019, but he's relatively still chugging along? Is it someone who has maybe made a mark and have been there five years but wanted to add? Sure. So to expand, so, so, so we can, I could come back to you with the literal percentages because we track it all. So the one, the person on the napkin, we, we would call that person an imagining entrepreneur. They're imagining the opportunity. The next would be incubating. So they are in business. Their business is growing. Um, it's generating, you know, first client relationships, revenues, has employees typically. Uh, and then the final stage is demonstrating so I would say with this program, um, it's probably 15% imagining. So it's, it's, it's a good number, but it's not a huge number. Um, so 85% would be those businesses already employing, employing right, having, have a name, right, have their attorney, ha oh yeah, have yeah. all that going for them. Yeah. And so why would they, say, a year into business, and they've made all the decisions, I guess, to get them to open the door and... Tech, why would they come to you? Just uh, so, so typically, a ma uh, the conversion the type of the, a, for, the, for the entrepreneurial services of uh, you know the the switch between imagining and incubating is probably they have a name. Okay. <laughs> they are registered with the state, and they have a point of view, and maybe they're self-employed, part-time or full-time. So the line between imagining and incubating is 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 reflected that way. Now, there's lots and lots and lots of businesses in Cuyahoga County that are 10, 20, 30 years old who now want to digitize their business or add to their business, and they also come to us. Part of the start. Yeah, of the, you know, so maybe they're not an incubating company, but they're incubating a new idea or a new product. And particularly if they want to use more of the entrepreneurial ecosystem to grow it, like they want to raise money from someone else, and they, you know, they want to do it in a different way. Uh, and they want to do it in a different way than maybe they've traditionally done it, and they don't have experience with that. So that's exactly what this, you know, this activity. Really, so I guess the word startup is a little. Uh, it's a little confusing, yeah. it's right? It's not really a startup. It could be. It an could be a, a starting product or service, but not necessarily a startup company. I think that brought out a lot of clarity that Great. a lot of times it's a division, it's a new product line, right. a new restaurant that wants to put something into the airports. Yeah. Exactly. Thanks. Uh, next person, uh, do you have... Uh, we do some have some of our sure. some of our love to hear some of the, 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 uh, the folks who've gone through this process. And how long would they have been at, at this from 
at this point? Are you able to tell? It ranges. Okay, good. So anywhere from months to years. Okay. So maybe I'll, I'll ask uh, Ms. Porras. Hello. Hi, how are you? Fine, thank you. Um, my name is Tonya Porras, and as uh, Ray had mentioned, I have gone through, um, I am currently actually going through the Jumpstart program. Um, I've been with them for, I would say, almost a year now, maybe. Sorry, I'm looking. It's, I started out with uh, Teleanje, and she um, helped me to support me to get through the mentoring program. But before I get into all that, I'd just love to tell you a little bit about what it is that my company does. Um, and in short, we are... My, sometimes I'm not sure about what it is that we're doing. But um, in short, we actually, so much of what you're talking about now is so much of what I've experienced. I started out as a nonprofit. Um, my mom was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. And seven years ago, I moved home to become her primary caregiver. And I recognized that there were a lot of gaps in services. I moved home from New York. My, um, I was a film and television person, so my work did not translate. So to your point, I, didn't, I was a caregiver, a full-time caregiver, but I still needed to make money, and I still needed to feel like I was not just a caregiver. Um, so I started a nonprofit, actually, um, supporting caregivers and their families and running socialization programs, in-person stuff. Um, it wasn't a brick and mortar. I partnered with the Beachwood Community Center, and we ran our programs there. But as I started to work through that, just very quickly, I, um, there was a period of time where Caregiving took up everything. It was controlling my life. It was many days I felt saddened. I felt overwhelmed. And I felt men mentally and physically drained. And it was for a short period of time, I became sick myself for a little bit. And that's why I created. So at that point, I recognized that me as a caregiver, my health, my physical mental health were being affected. And I understood, I started to do a lot of research and understood that the physical mental health of all caregivers is severely affected. So I understood with when COVID shut down our programs, what's that next stage of Gloria's way? And we really started to look into the health, the physical and mental health of caregivers. And that is when we realized to what Ray had mentioned earlier about technology today, that even the support, if I wanted, and I speak to the Alzheimer's Association often, even if we sent everybody in Cleveland, which is about 240,000 people, plus the 60,000 or more of caregivers, that if we sent everybody to the Alzheimer's Association, they would not be able to support them. There's just not enough. But the beauty about tech, what tech can do, tech can support them in various ways. And that was, we sort of, we pivoted a little bit and that became a new direction. But I also came to understand my board and myself is that with tech and its expenses, but also it's our now much broader audience we want to reach of caregivers, that we had to become a for-profit company. And we had to, because of the capital we had to raise, but also the intensive support that was going to be necessary for what we were doing. And... So your something that, a point that you brought up in the very beginning, it's like, you know, would people, yes, you're right. A lot of businesses don't give money or grants to precede operational stuff. But from a tech person, from a startup point of view, that's really where we need all the help. And there's not a lot of support out there. So in my many days of, 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 um, not being clear on my direction, somebody had suggested to reach out to Jumpstart and see if they could support me in my pre-seed operational, really understanding what a business looks like for a for-profit aspect. And that's what I did. I reached out, and it's been a year now. I've gone through um, two of their mentoring programs, a diversity program, which is specific to females and women of color, and um, another mentoring program. And both of those mentors have been really very incredible. Um, they've supported me in creating a business, which is now we are creating self-care programs that are gonna be accessed through our self-care application. Um, and we have already, I'm working on funding right now, but um, I've been speaking to four people that are 
that are here do live locally um, to bring on board to either work on the self-care programs or work on the development of the application. Um, so I feel extremely, I, I feel very, as an entrepreneur, you have so many balls in the air. You're constantly unsure of what direction you're supposed to go in. My, it's funny, my dad used to always say, well, Tonya, it feels like, when I would talk to him about all the obstacles, it feels like you're a woman in a forest and you can only see the density of the trees. Okay, dad, like not really sure what that meant at all until I started working with Jumpstart because what they did, the, here's the fine, what they did is they actually do what their company, their name is. They jumpstarted me out of the forest, back onto the road, and they helped me to really literally uh, define my vision, develop a roadmap for for creating Gloria's way. But not only that, they're, you know, and that, that deals with strategy. Um, I've actually, they put me in touch with a law firm that I've used um, to create contracts and just to talk about what does it mean to incorporate and how do they help me to actually incorporate. Um, I'm working with a financial person um, that's part of their staff. So they slowly, okay, Tony, this is the next step. Here, I think you should need to speak to somebody else. And so instead of me having to go out and find that, I'm, I feel like I'm finally getting a little bit of a, of a resource where I don't have to go out and do everything myself. Well, to my chagrin, they make me do a lot of it on my own, um, but they, they, have, they provide that, that path and that way. And not only that, also emotionally and psychologically, they've helped me to grow where I can feel confident, even though I still feel like a deer in headlights sometimes, but I can feel confident standing in front of you, talking about my business and saying that I am an entrepreneur. And so um, I, that is, you know, that is Gloria's way, that is myself, that's what Jumpstart has been able to provide for me for the, the past year and I hope, I hope they don't stop, but um, I'm sure I'll have to come to it at some point, but it's, um, it's, it's definitely been um, a weight, part of a weight lifted off my shoulders in that respect. Questions from anyone on the, com on the committee first? No, Mr. Miller? Mr. Chairman, thank you. I just have one. I, I appreciate your uh, description and all the difficult efforts that you're willing to take on. My question is, uh, suppose I were a caregiver and I purchased your self-care product. Uh, what exactly would I be purchasing and how much would it cost? No, that's great. So um, we're still in development, but these are great questions. Uh, it's, we are creating a, a, an application. So you would go online and you would, there would be a number of various self-care programs. So we're really focusing on what we call the six pillars of health. So uh, research is out there that states that to be a healthy person, you really have to take care of your diet. Your, you have to make sure to be exercising a certain amount Sleep is super important. Social engagement is really important. Um, stress levels are huge, and um, and social and sort of like a form of cognitive training. So we're really focused on that. So we're working with behavior therapists and medical professionals to create evidence-based programs that will help a caregiver like myself. They will go onto your, uh, our application and they will say, wow, I really need support and stress. I'm just feeling so much anxiety. They can click on, a pro on our stress program, lowering stress, and that is a great number. I am still working through how much that will cost, but it will be affordable. Um, and the idea is, is that, and then the idea is, is that there's gonna be a number of programs. So some, some caregivers may not need to lower their stress, but they definitely are not eating well. And I need to know how to be a healthier eater, what I need with the education of it, but also how I can actually implement it into my caregiving life, which I don't know if any of you have been caregivers before, but there's not a lot of time. So um, we're also really focused on making it easy, easy to use, five minutes a day um, type thing. And it's just different programs. You work through one program, then hopefully that helps and you come back for another program. But <laughs> It's not only that, it's also helping caregivers to learn how to be uh, more thoughtful and better caregivers. So we're giving them, you know, little toolkits. We're creating toolkits, um, which in short, it's just 
providing tools to support caregivers in living healthier and taking care of themselves so they can live healthier lives to care for others because there's not much out there for the caregiver. So, uh, in short, sorry, I get, I've been working on this a long time, so I can I can talk for sometimes too much, but so, uh, Mr. Chairman, to uh, I would just uh, give you a little encouragement that I uh, I read a book that was published oh uh, six or seven years ago, ago called uh, Better Than Before about. Uh, about personal habit change, and, mm -hmm. and, and the author uh, identified very much the same same categories as, as essential. So, uh, so it sounds like you're on the right track. Yes, that is what we're focused on. So, in fact, the author I've spoken to. So, yeah, no, and there's Kathy Wood. She runs um, a healthy habits program at USC I've also been in contact with. So, one that that she identified that you didn't mention is decluttering. Yeah, <laughs> that is true. Decluttering, that is really, because I think about my family. When I read that, read that, I think about my mom. So eventually they had to move out of the house and my parents lived in Shaker for about 40 years and I was put to task to declutter that house. It took me a couple months. So um, yes, that is a very important habit. <laughs> to work on, especially the older you get. But um, any other questions? Any other, for anybody? Yeah, well, I'll, I'll just, as you probably, yeah. Ms. Ms., uh, Ms. Portes, uh, um actually just on the same side as, as Mr. Miller out there that my dad used to say, first thing you had to do is gotta take care of the machine and the machine is you personally. If you don't take care of the machine, it won't it won't be able to perform for you for whatever you need to do. And like that. Uh, there was a good book, book by Dr. Oz and Dr. Roizen called You, the Owner's Manual, which is almost the exact same components that you've got if you've ever, ever read uh, Dr. Oz or Dr. Roizen uh, locally. Um, you indicated services that are provided by uh, Jumpstart uh, in regards to this. Are any of those, were the, any of those fee-based? No, you? no, so, they were all free. So I wanna, again, yeah. we're talking not just to no, of amongst course. us, we're talking to some third party out there. And um, you didn't have a revenue-based uh, target yet, it, it sounds like at this point in time. Uh, but some place, somebody's going to have to write some code, I assume, for this app. Uh, is, is, where are you getting the code written? Correct, uh, developers. In the area, I hope? Yes, okay. yes. Okay, because that, that's one of the areas that we are focusing on in, re, in a big way in the, the workforce sector partnership is, is on the tech side. So for, perhaps maybe you can uh, to talk to Mr. Hurdick and because I know that there's a uh, that's one of the three sectors partnerships that uh, the county is also funding on the other side of code writing and things of that nature. Yeah, I will tell you, it is not easy to find. But it is not easy to find. I can tell you that as somebody <laughs> who, who is always trying to hire code writers ourselves. Thanks. Sure. Thank you. Good luck. Sure. Thank you so look much. Look forward to buying your product someday. No, we don't look forward to buying because it's, it's a need, but I know that I have a need within the family. Yep. I'd like to introduce India Johnson, who's the CEO of UA Vistas. Hello. Hi. My name is India Johnson. Excuse me, Ms. Johnson. Can you pull the microphone down a little? All right. Can you hear me now? Yep. Great. Um, my name is India Johnson. I'm the CEO of UA Vistas. Um, it is a data collection company. So I am a certified drone pilot. Um, we provide general drone services, and one of our current projects is working on environmental sustainability and conservation projects specifically looking at invasive species and uh, wetland health. So I've been working with Jumpstart for about two years, uh, maybe a little bit more. I reached out to them way back when I was um, in Coquimbo, not that long ago, but when I was an undergrad, about a few ideas I had. And then when I decided to start a business on the side, I reached out again. This was, I think, late 2019. Um, I officially started my business uh, February 2020 month later would be a very interesting time for humanity. Um, and they helped me sort of navigate the business world. So I don't come from a background of a business background, a finance background, or any of those sorts of things. Um, I come from a tech, ecology, biology background. Um, 
And so just kind of putting all the pieces in place was confusing for me because I didn't really know where to start. Um, you know, do I, I got a lot of the materials together, like, you know, the filing of the name and the LLC and those sorts of things. Um, but I didn't know some of the basics of business, especially with talking about an idea, pitching an idea, uh, marketing an idea. And so I reached out to Jumpstart and they helped me to de develop all those business foundations. And as I sort of progressed along, I formed a lot of connections through Jumpstart that provided funding, further business development, um, and hiring. So right now I'm hiring people on a contract basis which that was something that um, the Urban League helped me figure out, who I got in contact with from Jumpstart. And like, how do you hire people? Like, how do you, as in, you know, someone who's not making a whole lot of revenue, W-2 somebody? Um, and kind of found out, no, you can have contractors and kind of work from there and work your way up. Um, so I currently have one contractor and looking for more pilots locally help with data collection, because that's one of the biggest parts of my company and what takes up the most time. Um, and I went through, so I would say the course I went through was I reached out to Jumpstart, was connected with a few people, developed the business, and then needed to validate my ideas around um, drones and environmental sustainability. And they put me in contact with um, University of Akron. So I went through their i program which helped me to refine my ideals a lot and then do that customer validation and discovery process, which was super, super helpful for my business. And then pivoted a bit, um, did a few other accelerator programs. And right now, I'm, things are looking really, really good. I'm um, going from not knowing anything to um, having quite a few successes. Anyone have any questions? I don't know if I covered everything. Ms. China? Do you want, thank you. Um, first of all, who are your customers that you're collecting data for in, in, around environmental issues and what are some of your successes? So currently, um, my target customer, so I guess I'm an incubator, so I just have to start with that. So I'm currently working on the idea and working on building a minimum viable product. Um, my target customer are natural resource managers, primarily in government, um, people who deal with wetlands, forests, invasive species management, um, water resources, so the sewer district, um, metro parks, um, ODNR, um, places that, you know, kind of deal with these issues head on, which is mostly not private companies, um, but there has been some interest. Um, right now, I provide more general drone services, so my current customers would be Anyone who wants video photography, um, photography, videography, aerial shots, those sorts of things, educational programs. Um, so lately there's been a lot of interest in actually teaching kids, teenagers, adults about drones, about STEM um, and STEM in relation to drones because kids kind of get more excited about that. Um, teach them about careers in tech, in um, the environment. And so I've been doing more that work um, both on a paid and volunteer basis. And then that's kind of the general side of the business. And then working on the MVP, which is more research and development. Questions from anybody else? I'm just curious in, in your field, especially as you seem to be navigating or pivoting to the governmental side of things, um, do you find a lot of competition? That and a lot of regulations that may be overwhelming in trying to uh, break into that field? Hmm. Um, so far, no. Um, I think because what I do is so low touch, like the idea of it is attaching cameras to drones, you know, getting the imagery and then processing it um, either on site or somewhere else. Um, so I don't have to worry about, okay, I'm sending people out into this, you know, wetland that's a protected area where, you know, they're worried about something getting trampled or chemicals being used or something like that. So I haven't had any pushback in the sense of, hey, we don't know if you can do this. Um, most of it is me trying to figure out what needs are and then trying to figure out the price points because I found that in my customer discovery, 
government and nonprofits work a little bit different than private industry. Private industry is kind of like, okay, you know, here's a check to see if this works. And then they might give you a price, they might not. Government is kind of like, okay, how do I probe them for how much they're going to pay? Like never get it out of them. Um, so that's kind of my issue right now. Like, How do I price this? So currently I've looked at kind of the general market and just kind of gone from what do people charge to fly acre of forest, you know, between 15 and $25. So kind of setting my price point there until the MVP is finished and then I can price it according to the value that it creates. That's interesting. Thank you. And good luck to you. Thank you. You know, Ms. Johnson, trust me, when you get to the private side, they will not write you a check just like that. They're going to ask you the same kind of justification. <laughs> At least I would hope so. When you get to be when you get to be successful with all your business, and it sounds like you will, uh, it sounds like you're moving from concept into revenue now, so which is a good good thing out there. So good luck to you out there. But they're going to ask you tough questions too. So they they just don't say here's a check. Okay. Thanks. Good luck. Thank you. you're taking the time to, to meet the two more folks we want to introduce you to. Kevin von Kieserling, CEO of Ready, Set, Surgical. Hello, good afternoon. As Ray said, my name is Kevin von Kieserling. I'm the CEO of Ready, Set, Surgical. I am most certainly the oldest entrepreneur here today, but I'm probably the youngest in my CEO role. I've, I've only been the CEO of Ready, Set for about six months. Prior to Ready Set, I co-founded and was the CEO of Key Factor. Key Factor is a cybersecurity company based in Independence, Ohio, just off of Rockside Road. Um, by year end, Key Factor will employ 450 people. Um, throughout, the, throughout the world, about 250 of those are in Cuyahoga County. So uh, it's a sizable tech company here. Um, talk to you a little bit about my work with Jumpstart, and I've come to think of Jumpstart over the years as great counsel, but it's critical infrastructure to the entrepreneur. And there's lots of valuable services that they provided for me over the years. One of those services is t looking at the market size. So Ray had mentioned, like, what are the, some of the services and things you just can't dial up Google and say, hey, what does this look like? And so I've often been trying to figure out what's the TAM or the total addressable market for my software that, that I sell. Uh, what's the serviceable addressable market? How much of that they, can they buy of my company? And uh, Jumpstart helps us figure and determine that so that we can go to market to raise capital for the company. Um, it, that's the other piece that Jumpstart's been great at helping me with is how do I build a pitch deck? How do I go out and talk to the venture capital community? What are the data points they're looking to understand from me and from the company and what will they invest? Um, and then giving um, a little guidance on how to look at a term sheet, how to evaluate a term sheet. You know, as an entrepreneur getting started, you're like, hey, is this a good deal or a bad deal? And how much equity am I giving up? Uh, and what's fair? And so Jumpstart's been great at helping to understand those metrics. Uh, I'm about to go out and hire a VP of sales so we can do some expansion here with ReadySet. And I'm looking for a VP of sales. They'll help me build the job description, tell me where to place it, and then help me with the recruiting system of it. And they'll give me great guidance on that piece of it. Uh, it's difficult to find that type of expertise in Cuyahoga County outside of Jumpstart. So uh, it's been a valuable, uh, uh, it, I think the, the entrepreneur before me just said it very well, it's helping me jumpstart the business. And so it's, it's, uh, from us, it's a, it's a, a valuable uh, advice and service to the community. From ReadySet's perspective today, we have about 17 coworkers in the state of Ohio. Seven of those, eight of those are in Cuyahoga County. Um, we just signed a term sheet to capitalize the company to take it from seed stage to growth stage. We'll add about, uh, we'll end the year at about 45 coworkers uh, and Jumpstart will play a critical role in helping us get there. Um, so it's, it's been a fun journey. Um, I'm very supportive of what the work Jumpstart's doing and Ray's done. I'm a big believer that if we're going to have social justice, we have to have economic justice. Uh, and uh, Ray's been great at making sure that the whole community is involved, not just the entrepreneurs who look like me. And so uh, I'm uh, pleased to be a part of that organization and they've been a great backer for Ready, Set. And with that, I'll take questions. Excuse me, Mr. Chair, your microphone. Excuse me, Mr. Chair, your microphone. Oh, thank you, uh, Ray, I, I have to 
Thank you for because you've brought three different elements of pre pre revenue, uh, early revenue, and now it looks like we've got a, a company that's uh, getting ready to to capitalize. And so it's it's a it's a nice way to tell the story. Uh, maybe is the next one going to tell us that they are getting ready to uh, have an event? Uh, yeah, yeah, okay, all right. Okay. Um, <laughs> So our final guest this afternoon is Felicia Townsend Ivy, and Felicia is incredibly important to Jumpstart because she represents our collaborating nonprofit organizations. None of the entrepreneurial services program, quote unquote, works without our partners. So Felicia will come up and talk a little bit about her leadership role as the SBDC director at the Urban League of Greater Cleveland, and also how we share clients and how we work together to, to get to these great outcomes. Good afternoon. I'm Felicia Townsend Ivy. I'm the director of the Small Business Development Center at the Urban League of Greater Cleveland. And the SBDC is a part of the Urban League's Entrepreneurship Center. So we have worked collabor collaboratively with Jumpstart, having a shared entrepreneur and resident under the ESP program since around. Um, maybe July or August of 2020. So we um, came together, um, interviewed some resources, and we found an amazing resource and a gentleman named Ron Stubblefield. So he was the first EIR that we brought in. Um, but kind of going backwards uh, a little bit, um, just to talk about what our issues are at the Urban League, so, you know, we primarily service about 84% African-American businesses at the Urban League. And out of those, out of that 85%, only less than 1% of those business owners are tech or tech-enabled business owners. So it was really important to us to try to bring more tech innovators out of the African-American community and minorities, because we also service, of course, a lot of women-owned business, brown businesses, and other minority businesses. But we were finding um, three major needs. So one was educating our aspiring and existing business owners as to the opportunities in the tech industry. And just getting, giving them the definition as Councilperson Baker, and I know you were kind of asking, like, okay, what is a tech business? So we had a lot of entrepreneurs who were tech businesses, but they didn't know because they have um, businesses that needed um, apps in order for them to uh, operate properly. Um, also, second, um, our issue was um, getting our business owners past that conceptual and prototyping phase. So it's easy for us to find, I shouldn't say easy, but e much easier for us to find funding and get our entrepreneurs started that have a, a revenue generating business that's going to be revenue generating in the immediate future. You know, so if we can go and get them a bank loan, we provide um, their financials, projections, the bank can see when they're, you know, about how much money they think they're going to make, when that money's going to come in. With a lot of these businesses that are tech, there's a lots of, lots of research and development that needs to happen, and that money's not going to come so fast. So it's a lot harder for us to get those businesses funded. And then one of the third, um, oh, that was the third. The third point is actually getting them funded, and then the other one is, like, getting them through that concept phase. Now, moving forward back to Ron Stubblefield, uh, we were able to utilize Ron's service to get our tech businesses on a structured path, path to launching their businesses. He has some of our business owners take, take a step back and go and reevaluate their value proposition because some of them really didn't have a good value proposition from the beginning. <laughs> Um, and this led to some of the, these businesses going back and really tweaking their designs and coming up with something that was more useful, of appealing to and the, the masses, and to and made it more user friendly. So our our businesses 
that we have our business that we have been struggling with to move forward. So let me back up. One of our businesses that we have been struggling with to move forward is Food Stretcher Plus. So he's a gentleman who had been in the ecosystem for quite a while. And we just couldn't get them. It was like our, it's the baby that you can't get out of the carriage. You know, make them walk. Get out the walker and go walk. So um, we, were, we were able to have him work with Brian, and he had been working with Jumpstart, and I will say prior, prior to that, we all had been kind of working with him. But put, putting him with Brian, he was able to make him really step back let me really look at what my value proposition is. And some of us have been kind of preaching to um, this particular business owner that, hey, you know, you need to strip some of these things down because they're kind of obsolete at this point. So he was able to have him um, really pare down, really look at what was going to appeal and be the most productive thing that he could put out. And so um, he did pare down. He made that app a lot more user-friendly, and, oh, well, let me back up and say what that Food Stretcher Plus is. So Food Stretcher Plus is an app that will allow individuals to utilize coupons for items such as frozen pizza, and it turns that into cash, and they can use that money to go and buy fresh vegetables and produce, and that was one of his... um, major objectives of this this app is to save individuals money but also to put more fresh vegetables into people's homes and um, that's one of the things that you don't get coupons for nobody ever has a a coupon for the watermelons or the greens and (laughs) the the fresh string greens and broccoli Um, so other than that sometimes our business owners have uh, what can we say uh not quite the right idea of how much their businesses are worth also. So Ron was able to help him to actually do a business valuation also of this is what you're really worth right now. (laughs) So if you're going out and you're going to talk to investors, you're not overinflating what this business is going to be worth. But yet, you know, we're not going to underinflate it also. So... These things were just paramount. And then us working together, we were able to help him to um, have a great investor pitch deck for him to home in his pitch because he was a person who rambled a lot and took you down the road. Um, so we, we taught him they bring it in and just talk about, you know, be concise and clear and compelling. And um, I'm happy to say that Food Stretcher, now they are planning to launch their pilot in Simon's Grocery Store. He was able to bring in a national brand on his app. He's looking at bringing in another national brand. Um, we're real close to um, sealing the deal, and he has uh, quite a few other little brands. But he's one of the, um, he, and we haven't got to that big revenue yet, but he's still a great success story because he's a person that we worked with for a few years. We really hadn't been able to get him to move him forward yet. But with this ERR resource that we share, we were able to move him forward. And I think that app is going to be a great resource to the community. And now that groceries are sky high, I think we can all use something that's going to help us to save money on our groceries at the end of the day. Also, um, and we've worked with um, India with UA Vistas. So, um, and I was glad she went before me because I thought she came to us before she went to her to jumpstart. But <laughs> I have been corrected. So, um, but when India came to us um, back in 2020, I believe it was 2020, um, she had the ideal to that she wanted to develop the drone, the intelligent drone. And she also had a thought to produce, um, develop an underwater drone that would be able to map underwater caves with more precision and, and make it more safe because now humans not trying to do any of that at all. And so we kind of talked about what's, what's, what, what would she be able to take to market first? Did she think it would be more that underwater drone 
or is it going to be the intelligent drone that can, you know, scan all the, the canopies of trees and look at the lakes and fields and vegetation and make that intelligent decision as to if there is um, invasive species or some invasive mold or growth that are going on. So the thought went to, okay, it's going to be best to um, focus in on the, the drone, the air drone first. So we have worked together with the EIR to bring many more resources to her. She's currently working with OAI also to um, put together a SBIR. So um, that's three of us, um, three of our organizations that are working together to help to bring these dollars to her. But again, I think um, between Ron and then our current resource, Camille, we have been able to really help um, India just put her value proposition together. We've helped her, helped her to um, gather all of the resources that she needs for the SBIR. And um, you've heard all the rest from her. So we're still looking. I'm looking for her to do absolute amazing things. I think it's so important that we support young women such as India. She has come from um, you mind me saying what neighborhood you came from? Okay, we're good. So, so she's a, a product of East Cleveland out of Shaw High School, where you know you don't see so many of those. Um, you just don't see businesses like that. So, and she's female in STEM, and I think, and she's already an inspiration to other young women as she move along, but I think it's important we get behind her to help her to be successful in this EIR program. Definitely is helping her to, um, to hit her goals and that. So with that, I'm cutting my um, comments down a little bit because I know the time has really gone on. I did want to mention that our latest resource, Camille Hurd, she recently organize a pitch cipher. So it's a pitch competition for tech businesses. Um, we all kind of came together, um, got out the word. We recommended some businesses for the pitch cipher, but the pitch cipher is there to expose um, minorities to other potential investors at these pitch ciphers. Also, it helps them to hone their skills to pitch for bigger dollars um, in the future. And um, also it, it gives them that exposure to grow clients. Some of our tech owners, maybe they just need people to download their app, you know, cause they're trying to get to a pilot point um, to grow their value proposition. It also helps with that. So people there can download their apps and get behind those individuals and support them. But I think the first pitch cipher, we um, it's gonna be a series, but the per first pitch cipher was super uh, successful. It was a full house and, um, and actually India made it first place. She was our first place winner in the very first pitch cipher. So, um, are there any questions? I have one, if you don't mind. Um, you know, it's good to hear that the good work that you're doing out there. The, uh, as an entrepreneur myself, the harsh reality back 25 years ago was sink or swim. I mean, you, you go out there, you have your idea, you undercapitalize, and perseverance and financing anything you own and going without for five or 10 years or more just to make sure that business has what it needs to expand, it's good to see that those resources are there for those that you see the success, but they need tweaking. They need professional help. They need guidance of how to present their plans. They need help in presenting themselves to the bank. All those things are great resources, I think, for that entrepreneur that is starting out with a lot of optimism, but perhaps not the resources that... Um, many have, especially when we're talking about small tech businesses that are starting out for the very first time that may not have a family of entrepreneurs to guide them. Uh, it can be pretty daunting. So I just thank you for your work that uh, you help those businesses and guide them in a way that uh, 
gets them on the right track without having too many failures and bad because you pick yourself up and you try again, you learn from your failures. But too many failures can be um, devastating, especially to your, your wallet. And um, I think I see that what you're doing is trying to mitigate much of that and let the entrepreneurial spirit exist, but exist in a way that has guidance. So thanks for all your efforts. Oh, you're welcome. And trust me, we try to ensure if, if we have a business owner and we feel like they have a failing ideal, we try to make sure we tell them that in a very loving way. <laughs> but oh, they Thank could you. fail. We our, our thing is, if you're gonna fail, fail fast. <laughs> Yeah, and do it again. I did want to mention one other thing. So um, with tech owners such as India, trust, uh, like our first appointment, half of the tech, the terminology was flying over my head. I had to um, read, Google, and um, Ron was definitely a godsend because when we had our shared meeting, it was like, you know, they were talking orange to orange or whatever. They were talking French, and I knew English. But he was able to um, really understand, and he had that expertise, and so does Camille. So we definitely need somebody who has that expertise that can work with our entrepreneurs on their level and um, not hold them back and keep pushing them forward. Thank you, Ms. Thompson, I, 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 uh, for that analogy of flying over your head with the drone uh, being presented. As a, <laughs> thank you very much. You're uh, welcome. Ray, is, uh, you want to you want to close up, or or is is, is Paul going to close up? Who's? Ray's done such a good job, but I'll stand up. For okay, you. all right. Well, I just want to thank Council. Um, this works. Obviously, we take it really serious. It's incredibly important. There's a lot of people out there with big dreams. Um, this is how our economy has continued to grow and evolve, and we're very uh, appreciative of your consideration. Well, I want to thank uh, my fellow committee members because uh, uh, I, I know that this is a unique presentation to come for economic development. Uh, it is not your typical one that, Paul, you'd be pitching to us saying, hey, here's the, in my, here's the investment, here's our return, here's our interest rate, here's what we're going to get back. And uh, But as I look at it, if we are investing two and a half million dollars and we end up with a thousand jobs, uh, that's twenty five hundred dollars per job. Um, that's lower cost per headcount than anything I think you presented to us uh, in any economic development program uh, that you've asked us to, uh, to put money into. So uh, with that, uh, I came into this with uh, open eyes, but uh, I'll be a little, I'll be quite candid. I, as you know, and as Ray knows in my pre-call, I was uh, a little skeptical, uh, but um, you made a believer of me. So I uh, don't, anybody else uh, wish to uh, buy in on this? We've got uh, a motion before us um, and it's been seconded. Uh, is there any discussion in regards to this? Uh, I think, oh, no, we, have, we haven't read this in the record. So I stand corrected. No, Please. we read it into the we record. Need to move, we may, yeah, we have to um, As chair, I'll move that uh, we move this for um, third or second reading uh, to additional uh, going through the process. Is there a second? Second, Simon. Seconded. If I may say discussion. it before yes. we vote, uh, yeah, there is a, a nine month preview. So, absolutely. Yeah, so that really is a, a nice safeguard for us too, is that you have really pushed the envelope in making sure that this uh, um, effort does meet that criteria and it does it in a very short period of time. It's kind of a window of, of opportunity for us to see the program play out. So that and, too is helpful. Right, and staff, can we make sure this makes it on the agenda three months from now uh, with those numbers and then three months after that for the second set of numbers and guess what? Uh, then the, the last of that three month period of time will be uh, will be at the end of the year, so you have uh, we have a commitment for uh, to to hit these targets in in the in the nine months, and let's go for it, Mr. Chairman. Yes, uh, I'm not on the committee, so I don't get a vote today. But I'll just comment that I'm also persuaded, and that I will be supporting this legislation when it comes to the full council. Okay, um, been moved and seconded properly. Uh, all in favor of on the committee, say aye. 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 And are you opposed? Hearing no opposed. Good luck. We'll see you in three months, see you in six months, and see you in nine months. Thank, Thank you. you. It's okay if you hit the all thousand in six months, too, by the way, if you want.
He has a he has to. Excuse me, Mr. Chair. Can you excuse me? Yeah. Excuse me, Mr. Chair. On behalf of the chair, we're gonna close out the meeting. Can you close motion? Yeah. Motion. Is there any miscellaneous business? Hearing no miscellaneous business, I terminate.